Now let's rewind to last week and we're going to talk now about the Trump E. Jean Carroll case. Last week a jury ruled that the former president must pay writer E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million for defamation. What sticks out to you the most about this ruling? Uh, it's a lot of money. You know, it's, it's a lot of money. We value Trump at over $3 billion, but $83.3 million is uh, something that's going to hurt. You know, it's, it's, it's also, you know, does he necessarily have that much liquid? Uh, what really stands out to me, though, was that Carol's lawyers argued that it needed to be a big fine because he is a wealthy man and a smaller fine would not be a deterrent. And they certainly, you know, that 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 message seemed to have gone through with the 83.3 million. And afterwards, when Trump was slamming the rulings on social media, he did not mention Carol. So, you know, it seems like that message, that message was received. I was just about to ask you, does it seem like this is finally the deterrent, the $83 million price tag to get him to stop posting about E. Jean Carroll? Um, I would bet you $83.3 million if I had it, that at some point he will continue to reference this case online. I don't think for, you know, he may not mention her specifically, uh, but he's going to continue to toe the line on this one, I believe, you know, or, or to go right up to it and, and, and press buttons. Um, you know, it's, it's Donald Trump and it, the allure of social media and a cell phone at 2 a.m. Is, is, I think, just too much for him sometimes. As you noted, Forbes has estimated that he is worth a couple billion, but $83 million isn't exactly pocket change for anyone. So do you think he's paying this out of his own pocket or is he going to dip into his Save America PAC, which reportedly has doled out over $55 million in legal fees in 2023 alone? You know, I've read speculated that he might go try to dip into his PAC money for that, um, whether that's legal or not. I don't think there's really much of a precedent of, uh, you know, whether or not it's OK for uh, presidential candidates to dip into their campaign funds to pay off a defamation uh, suit. So, you know, that's something that I could also see to be litigated. But uh, you know, he's going to do anything he can to not be, you know, to not have to pay this out of his own pocket. Um, and it's, it's going to be a while, I think, for E. Jean Carroll to see any of these proceeds in that Trump's going to appeal. You know, he's he's very good at, at dragging on court proceedings for as long as possible. Um, so who knows? You know, she said she was going to use the 83.3 million um, that Trump owes her for something the former president hates. Um, you know, personally, I'd love to see her invested in investigative reporting. Uh, Trump doesn't seem to be a big fan of that stuff, but I, I think it'll be a little while for uh, for Ms. Carroll to see those funds. Zach, your reporting of Trump has gone back years. You and I have talked all about his criminal cases, lawsuits, investigations that have been swirling around him over the past year. When you look at all of them, what uh, which one is the most serious to you? You know, I still think the special master looking into his use of documents is holding documents at Mar-a-Lago. I mean, that is a national security issue right there. Um, you know, a lot of the other accusations are, are certainly serious racketeering, trying to overturn an election, uh, you know, the conviction uh, for defamation, the conviction on, in civil court or founding li um, liable for uh, sexual assault with Eugene Carroll. I mean, those are absolutely serious allegations, but you know, national security offense uh, by holding documents there is, is, I think, far and away the one that is, is the most serious and might have the most repercussions for him illegally. All of these cases really run the gamut here. He was indicted four times last year, as we discussed, charged with 91 felony counts. But it always comes back to the 2024 election, which really, I mean, how fitting. It's Groundhog Day of 2020. Just now, we're talking about more investigations, more lawsuits, more court cases. But according to a uh, recent general election poll from CNN, Donald Trump is beating President Biden in a head-to-head -head matchup, 49% to 45%. Why do you think that is? You know, it's going back to Groundhog Day. It's the same thing how he got elected after the uh, Access Hollywood. And, you know, the question was then, why are Republicans, you know, some of them were quick to throw him over the edge, but came back to him. So why are they lining up behind him? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, there's a sizable amount of Americans who are clearly comfortable with him being their president. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into polling in general, uh, polling this early, polling on like national polls. You know, it does not matter one iota what, uh, you know, who people in Massachusetts or Mississippi are going to vote for for president. The, what, what really comes down to is those swing states, 
I would also look at maybe states that weren't, you know, really swing states in the last election, but were kind of close to it and may have had some Trump friendly uh, secretaries of state put in there, or maybe some Trump friendly voting laws passed. Those would be the ones I'm looking at. But overall, um, you know, I wouldn't pay any attention to what the uh, you know, results of the uh, you know, survey polls rather of the overall country and electorate think. I know we talked about whether or not his legal issues will impact the race. And we are um, we're, we're less than a year out, but we still have months to go. Do you think the result of any of his legal troubles could be that black swan event that really swings the pendulum one way or the other in the election? You know, the, the polling from Bloomberg was was very interesting with the amount of um, Republicans who said they would not be willing to vote for somebody who you know was indicted or a candidate who was um, found guilty. I think it was 53 percent of voters in seven battleground states that they would not be willing to vote for Trump in a general if he was found guilty of a crime. Um, and it went up to 55 if he was sentenced to prison. Um, those seems like you know that that seems like it might matter. You know, it, those are very, you know going to be very tightly contested elections and a push like that might matter. But you know that also, as with any poll, were people honest? You know, maybe they don't want to tell a pollster like, oh yeah, I got no problem voting for the guy if he's in jail. That's fine. No, no, not an issue. Like you may not. Yeah, you know, that's someone you may want to keep to yourself. Or um, you know, similarly. Are these people actually going to find out that he was found guilty or sentenced? You know, are they consuming news that's going to give them, you know, the truth there? Or are they just watching something that's, you know, oh, nothing happened today. Let's uh, let's go to the weather. So um, who knows? You bring up a really interesting point. And as we've been saying, we still are months out from the election. So there's a lot that remains to be seen. And in every one of the stories we discussed today, I mean, the chapter's not closed on them. The story is still ongoing. So what specifically are you looking out for next? You know, that's a great question. I just don't think anything's going to change. Um, you know, we're look. The one thing that would obviously throw the race into turmoil more than anything else is that we are talking about two, uh, you know, elderly people here, and if a health issue were to come up, you know, that is obviously the something that would just totally throw the election. What we're talking about out the window, and it may not matter. I mean, both men seem to be in fine health. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But um, you know, when you're when you're that age, six months can be a long time. Zach, thank you so much for coming on, for breaking down all the important headlines of the week. I'm looking forward to having you join me again soon. Thanks, me too.